Hello, this is Patrick Dean. I'm president of Seminar Systems, and we do coaching and mentoring and facilitation of leadership trainings all over the world. So that's the introduction for those of you that are on this Wednesday uh, fireside chat. And if you're uh, just returning, welcome back. And it's great to have you here. Um, today, I'm going to talk about resistance. We're just going to spend a little bit of time on resistance and um I did an experiment and I want to share with you the results of that experiment because I experimented on myself. And uh, so here we go. And I'm going to talk about that experiment and I'm going to talk about resistance. So uh, I was looking at all these definitions of resistance and there's, uh, there's definitions that go into science, into electricity or into chemistry. And uh, there's all kinds of um, explanations around uh, uh, biology and everything else around resistance. But I just want to talk about the resistance that we feel when we come up against something that challenges us. So basically, I defined resistance as a feeling that occurs when our well thought out story and belief systems are challenged. So it's a feeling or experience that we have when our well thought out belief system and our story that we've put together is challenged. So the first thing is, is I think that when I wanted to start this experiment on resistance and the purpose of the experiment was to find out how we could connect with each other when we're in resistance or we meet a resistant person or even connect with ourselves. So I wanted to do this. And um, so the first thing was for me to take a look at defining what I meant by resistance and story. So we all live a story. That's my experience, myself and all the people that I've worked with. So we all, all of us have a story. And that story that we live has to do with, um, uh, we put together from our upbringing, upbringing as kids, from our experience with our parents. We put it together for, from our friends, from school, from the experiences we had in our life in school, for the experiences we had in our life from work, from the people we met there, the experiences that have happened to us, all of that put together. And, and basically, the interpretation of everything that's happened to us to put into something called a world view. So my suggestion here is we all have this world view. We look at the world in a certain way. And then what happens when we do that is we start to gather evidence out there in the world that fit into our worldview. And so we're looking for things that fit and we ignore or don't see things that don't fit. So resistance comes in, I believe, when we run into things that don't fit this story, our story or worldview. For instance, uh, let me give you an example for me since the experiment was with me. Um, let's see, one of my, the ways that I look at myself. So the, one of the ways that I relate to people is through my academic background, through my study, through the things that I've known. One way that I, that I know, that I think I know anyway, and one way that I relate to people as well as through all the training and seminars and the thousands of people I've met. That's a way that I relate to people. So I look at all of this and I put in, put this in, in a worldview of the best presentation of myself, the, the presentation of myself out there that I think will be the most effective in my working with people and for myself. Now, can you relate to what I'm saying in the sense that we have a presentation created from a worldview that we've created through our interpretation? So we've got all of that going. So there's nothing wrong with our story or good or bad about it or anything. It's simply a matter of taking a look of whether our belief systems are effective or ineffective. And that's what's called transformational work that you're looking at all the way you see things, and is it getting you where you want to go? So what happens when we're challenged is that we get this resistance going, and that resistance can be an indicator of whether there's a new experience going on, something that we can take on as a challenge or something that we react to. Now, I think 
<laughs> there's a momentary experience that happens when we're challenged. And that resistance is a feeling, or as I've said several times, is an experience. Now, I tried to take it apart a little bit, and I thought uh, resistance has some anger in it. It has some uh, a little bit of confusion going on in it because it's not exactly how we see the world. Uh, then it has this element of being righteous and dug in about this is the truth and that doesn't fit. And then what we do also is if things don't fit what we believe, we challenge the source of that of that. We challenge the source of where that stuff is coming from. And if it happens to be another person, then we really get into resistance in connection with that person because they're a source of something different or something we don't believe or something that's that we're not used to controlling in our life with our story and all this, as, as, I, as I said earlier, well thought out stuff that we've put together. So uh, my worldview of myself might be or is that uh, I'm like I said earlier, I'm an academic and I have done a lot of study and I want to show up with you guys like I have some great information, like I'm an authority, like that, uh, you know, I've put in the work and the time and I have something of value to share with you. So that's fine and great, except when new stuff starts to come in and it challenges my belief systems challenges my idea or view of myself as an authority, something I don't know or I I'm, have no clue about or something that's completely outside of my worldview, the way I look at things, that challenge is how I meet that challenge is really kind of get dug in. Now, I'm not proud to say that, but I think that maybe some of you relate to that about how we get dug in around that stuff so um okay so so anyway so here i am with sort of this worldview and and acknowledging myself for all of these this stuff that comes up and i said and i, and I said earlier it can be an indicator of something exciting or it can be an indicator that we're uh that we need to back away or all that kind of stuff so that feeling of resistance is a great teacher and that's going to be one of my themes here so let me get on with the experiment and the result of the experiment and some of the solutions that we can have so the so this experiment has has something to do with politics now i've never talked about politics in trainings or with groups of people or with my clients mainly because the political situation is irrelevant in our own growth. It's irrelevant to what immediately affects us, and it's irrelevant to how we can control the experience of fulfillment and satisfaction in our life. What I think the political situ uh, situation indicates, and a, a bunch of us are very tired of this whole thing, and what it indicates is something outside of ourselves, or something that uh, maybe we didn't pay attention to or take care of or whatever, all the stuff going on out there. But What's more relevant is what's happening in our life right now. But I'm going to use this political thing in my experiment because I wanted to talk, I wanted to see about resistance and how it worked for me. So my uh, brother in law and sister in law came to visit a couple of weeks ago, and they are lovely people, amazing people. And it was it was great having them and great talking with my my wife and I had just an amazing time. But my brother-in-law comes from a completely different uh, political experience than I come from. Uh, of course, <laughs> I'm in California, so I have more of that uh, that progressive and with a lot of libertarian thrown in viewpoint about how things can operate. And it comes from a way more conservative place in his politics and conservative in his religious view. So the rule is don't talk politics. Don't get into these places where you're going to have disagreement. But I didn't want to do that. What I really wanted to do 
is to see if he and I could actually have a conversation that could create some value. Could we, even though we're far apart, could we find a place of mutual connection talking about politics instead of avoiding all that stuff that uh, that we know is going to bring up emotion and feeling, how could we bring come together? And I think that this could be relevant for a lot of our relationships. Those of you listening here, for, for all of our relationships, not just about politics, but all about stuff that we can talk about and work through and maybe find a solution. So what we did was um, we did this experiment where... We said, okay, we're going we're gonna to sit and we're going to take some time and I want to hear all about how you believe, what you believe in, what your experience is, and I'll tell you mine. So our agreement here was to set some ground rules. Uh, so the ground rules sounded like this for this experiment. We would both talk. We would both take the time to hear and to listen to each other. We were going to be thorough in this conversation. In other words, it wasn't simply going to be a conversation of sound bites or uh, five sentences or leading to anger or any of that kind of stuff. We were going to actually have a discussion about how we felt, what we experienced, and our and how our worldview fit in. So, when we had a conversation, we were conscious about our worldview, how our politics were affected by our background and by uh, and where we got our belief systems. So we had an amazing conversation. And in this conversation, uh, we had, of course, we had that rule about, uh, we had the rule about listening and being open. We had a rule about uh, having a spirited argument is a okay, and uh, finally, we wanted to be absolutely operate from a place called curious and interested, rather than the place called what I call the bigger fish conversation is, which I'm waiting for you to talk. You told me that you caught a fish, and then I'm listening to you, but I'm actually not listening. I'm waiting for you to stop talking so I can tell you. I caught a bigger fish. That's called the bigger fish conversation. That is not actually a conversation. What we wanted to do or what I wanted to experiment with was whether I could open this, this way of communication between us in such a way that he felt open enough to and felt respected enough so he could talk about how he developed these opinions, where they came from, where they, and as I said earlier, how they touch the worldview. Uh, we wanted to talk at the end, we wanted to talk a little bit about solution of whatever we were talking about or debating. And then uh, we were always, we had a rule that we were going to kind of default to kindness. Now, when I say default to kindness, what I mean by that is that, uh, you know, we had these horrendous fires up here in Northern California several years ago. And when the call went out for things to help people who had, uh, had become homeless because of the fires, who had um, had this devastating loss in their life, the call went out for help, for blankets, for, for medicine, for all kinds of different things that, that were needed, for water, all of it. And all of this help just poured in and i think i've shared with you before what happened was they had to say they had to stop people because in human beings in all of us there's a default position of wanting to help people and so what happened was everybody came together it didn't matter what your politics were it didn't matter your color it didn't matter where you where you came from or the language you spoke all of this help and people came together to help each other. That, I think, is a default position. Now, we, of course, have a default position of separation and tribalism and all that kind of stuff. But a deeper place, I think that we default to kindness and caring. It wouldn't matter the politics of someone if you saw someone stuck out there at night 
um, uh, with their car broken down and you could do something to help, you would help somebody or you would reach out to somebody in some way, I would imagine. So um, that's that default to kindness that every human being, I believe, has. So what we did was in this conversation, we always kept that in mind. So the result of this hour-long conversation about something that we were so far apart, the result of this experiment was that uh, I learned something astounding, and that was that the difference and the separation between us and our ideas was not that far apart. We weren't that far apart. And what our, our what we cared about for other people, what we cared about for our country, what we wanted to have happen, and some of the policies even, uh, we weren't that far apart. It really just became a matter of degree um, that we were apart or how much money we were going to spend on it or the time frame involved. All of that debatable stuff that's good for debate and good to talk about and we need to talk about with each other because no one has the no one has the answer um that showed up when we got off of the part of blaming other people for challenging our belief systems when we got off this part about labeling or the judgment that kind of comes up naturally when we are when our belief systems are challenged when resistance comes up there is also that part of ourselves that that gets confused and we don't like that but the great part is you can work through it and working through it and being able to listen and being able to have a conversation starts with you being genuinely curious in the other person how what is the viewpoint and where do they get that viewpoint where did they get the information to support that viewpoint where where does it all come from and then the deeper you can get into that the more understanding there is from my point of view and so we had an amazing conversation in that experiment um uh again so again what i want to say is that great conversations with people in your life start out with yourself knowing yourself that you know your some of your places that you default to regards your belief systems and you know underneath there's a default for you the uh, position of calling wanting to help so you know that about yourself then the second thing is is instead of the name calling or labeling or trying to fit things in so much of so much of my life i've it's been like having a puzzle in front of me and i get a piece that is different than other pieces and i have one hole there in front of me and i start to hammer that piece in to make it fit into my belief systems when you knock all that off it takes the stress out of connection and 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 uh commitment so the question is then what if people uh, are unwilling to have that kind of conversation with you. What if I, if people? If, what if you want to start this, but but it's not going to it's not going to develop. And I would say that that's not the person that you want to have conversations around about solution. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong. It simply means that you have a limited amount of time and you want to have conversations with people and if you start to set this ground rules down even subjectively you don't have to do a formal thing around it but even subjectively you're going to find that you can learn a ton of stuff and you can have spirited argument argument in the classical sense of going back and forth and really getting into it without without all this blame and fear of anger and all the stuff that can come up so my challenge here for us is to walk through this whole political, excuse me, political experience that we have, whatever's going on, and look at what's really important to us and the people that are important to us and practice this communication. Know, resist, know that they have resistance because of their story. You have resistance and you can always find a common ground. Okay. That's a practice. That's the practice of mastery. 
I thank you very much for being on this Facebook Live, and I look forward to our chat next Wednesday. I will let you know when that is and the topic that we're going to talk about. Get out there and make the difference that you were born to make. Love you guys, and thank you.